Today in our 2014 Toyota RAV4, we'll be installing the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with a four-pole flat trailer connector. Part number 118578. So here's what our wiring looks like now that it's been installed. As you can see, it's completely hidden inside our vehicle. To gain access to it, just lift up on your spare tire cover, pull it out from down below, close the cover back up on. We'll set it to the side of our latch here for our hatch. We can close the hatch on up. Now, we're at a good height with length of wire to hook up to our trailer. We can just take our protective dust cover off here, make our electrical connection to our trailer, and if we're all coupled up with our safety chains hooked up, we're ready to get down on the road. Now, when we arrive at our destination, we're ready to unhook from our trailer, just unhook everything, put our dust cover back on to help protect the connector, open our hatch back up, lift up on the cover, tuck it down inside the storage compartment, and can close our hatch and we're ready to go on the way. Don't worry about a wiring getting snagged on anything or loading cargo in and out of our vehicle. It keeps it nice and protected and out of the elements. Now the reason you want this wiring harness is if you're going to tow a trailer with your RAV4, you need to have operating turn signals, taillights, and brake lights on your trailer in order to legally tow it. This will help provide that solution for you, allowing you to safely and legally tow your trailer going down the road. This wiring harness will provide you a 4.2 amps of power for your turn signals and your brake lights and 7.5 amps of power for your tail lights and all the running lights on your trailer. It's a quick and easy solution in order to give you the electrical connector that you need to tow your trailer. Start with opening our rear hatch. We'll remove our floor covering here. Slide it forward to be fine. Take out our spare tire. Now on our driver's side of our vehicle, we have the storage tray next to our spare tire. It's held in place with three clips. There's a trim panel pull to get them out or a flat head screwdriver. Okay, with those three removed, we can grab our panel, lift up on it, and we'll set it aside. Now we have two 10 millimeter screws that we need to remove. One here below our light, one up here below the white panel. Now we have a Phillips screw right here. Now, our cargo hook right here will fold down the hook, pop open the cover, we'll find a 14 millimeter bolt or remove that. We have one more 10 millimeter bolt here behind another cargo hook. Now we'll remove our center trim panel piece here. We may need to use a trim panel piece underneath it to help get it started. Set that aside. Okay, now we'll remove our driver's side panel here. Pull back this weather stripping a bit. Get our hands behind it. Pull back. Those are those two bolts that were still in there. Now I'll pull back our white panel a bit as well. So right here, we'll find our connector for our driver's side tail light assembly. Take our trim panel tool, and we'll pop it off. We'll push on this tab here and disconnect it. Separate those two. All right, we'll leave those disconnected and we'll repeat the same process for the passenger side panel in order to get access to our connector. Okay, with our passenger side disconnected, we can now start making our connections. All right, now we'll take our connector that goes to our tail light on our driver's side and our connector with the yellow wire. We'll plug the female end into the male end on both ends.
and we'll clip this back up in place. Okay, we got the clip pushed back in its original position. Now we'll take our module here and our double sided tape, peel off one end, place it onto our module, press down firmly, peel off the other end, and we'll place it to a flat surface inside our vehicle. Right there will be a good spot. Now our white wire is a ground wire. We can attach it right here to this existing bolt on this bracket. We'll remove this bolt with a 10 millimeter socket. Place the bolt through our ground wire and reattach it. Okay, that'll give us a nice solid ground connection. This black wire here is our power wire for our module. We'll strip off a little bit more insulation. And we'll attach a yellow butt connector to it. Now we'll take the uh, end of the black wire that comes with our kit, strip off some insulation, insert it into the other end of the butt connector, and we'll crimp it down. Now we'll wrap our connection up with some electrical tape just to help keep any debris or moisture out of it from potentially causing corrosion or short. Yes. And any other connection that we make with a butt connector, we will do the same. Now this grommet right here, we'll just grab it, and pull it on out, and we'll use this to pass our wire through. Take our black wire and pass it through the hole where the grommet was. Now we'll take our grommet, we'll put a slice in it. Once we have it cut, come about 90 degrees and make another notch in it. So we give our wire room to pass through. We'll slide our wire through it and reinstall the grommet. Okay, with the grommet back in place, we can seal it up with some silicone sealant. This will just keep any moisture or exhaust gases from entering our vehicle. Once we have a nice dab in there, we'll just push it down in where we cut, and this will seal it all up nicely. Now we'll take our connector that has the green wire on it. We'll run it over our passenger side and make our connections. All right, with all of our connections made in the hatch, we'll make sure our four pole flat runs underneath this panel, and we can reinstall all of our panels and floor coverings in the hatch in reverse order of disassembly. All right, now we'll secure wire that runs across. Use a couple of the zip ties that are provided. It's gonna go through this grid panel here. <laughs> We'll do the same here on the driver's side, securing that grid. Right, we went ahead and routed our power wire to the front of the vehicle, making sure we avoided any moving parts such as the suspension and any sources of heat such as the exhaust. We went above the rear subframe over our fuel tank where we have it secured with a couple zip ties to a skid plate and then to a wiring harness and then we have it come up behind our firewall where we have it secured with another zip tie to a bracket for the brake lines now we just want to tuck it up under here drop down a fish wire connect it and pull it into our engine bay all right, here's our fish wire. We'll just drop it down behind our firewall here. We'll secure our wiring up out of the way here with the zip tie to this wiring harness. Now we'll take our fuse holder here, cut the loop right in the middle, 
Then we'll strip back the insulation on both ends of wire. Put a ring terminal on one end, butt connector on the other. Cut back some of the wire here, just leaving us enough to work with. Strip off the insulation. Put our butt connector on from our fuse holder. Now on our positive battery post, we have a nut right here. It's a 12 millimeter. We'll remove this. And we'll place our ring terminal over that stud. Put the nut back on. Now at this point, we can install our fuse and our fuse holder. And we'll close the dust cover back up. Now we'll test our wiring. All right, we'll start by turning on our headlights on our vehicle. And as you can see, our tail light function for our trailer. This also controls our running light is working. Do a left turn signal, a right turn signal. We'll step on the brakes and the brake lights on our trailer will be working too. Now we know all of our functions are working, we can hook up to a trailer and get on the road. And that completes our installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with a four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118578 on our 2014 Toyota RAV4. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.